www.ie for details. Football on Off The Ball. In association with the faster than ever Boyle Sports app. With hundreds of pre-live and in-play football markets. Download it now. Boyle Sports. Time to play. You're welcome back to Thursday's Off The Ball. It's half seven. John Giles is on the line. Evening, John. Evening, Nathan. So, quite a week. Martin O'Neill yeah. and Roy Keane are no more after five years in charge of the Irish team. Was it the right decision? I think so, Nathan. Yeah, I think things got very, very bad. Uh, recent matches, particularly, uh, there didn't seem to be any hope um, from those particular matches. Mm. I, and I think it came to, to, to the right conclusion, Nathan. Was it those two games against Denmark and Northern Ireland just the final straw that there was no sign of an upturn that against particularly against Northern Ireland opposition that at the very least we should be at the same level as we were outplayed out toss certainly created far fewer chances at home against Northern Ireland do you sense that, that maybe was the, the final straw I think so I mean it was getting worse uh, Nathan there's no doubt about it but I think that was the, the last straw I mean Northern Ireland are a team with I think generally accepted less uh, less good players than we have mm. and they were well organised and beat as well. It didn't just beat us. I mean, I think that match could have been 3-0 uh, quite easily. I think, uh, you know, the goalkeeper played very well. Uh, Randolph played very well for us in, in that particular match. But it, it, it's, it's usually a build-up to uh, a dismissal of a managerial team. When you, when it doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen because of one match, uh, Nathan. You know, if you go back over the years, uh, you know, and, and I think every every manager has has a lifespan. I mean, if you go back to Big Jack, who was one of our big heroes, mm. I mean, Jack Charlton was sacked, Nathan. Yeah, it never ends well. No, well, it can't. I mean, if you're going to get sacked, it's because things are not good. Uh, I mean, Trapattoni did well for us for, for a couple of years, mm. and, and he was sacked. And Martin O'Neill did well for a couple of years. It's only a couple of years ago that Martin came home a hero. Uh, from the Euros, but that's what happens in football. You know, he's five years in the job now, and it's it's it, what happened. What happened two years, three years ago, doesn't matter. Uh, it gets to the stage where it's like either six months or twelve months where the results go very bad, it go badly, and the team is not doing well. That leads to what what's happened to uh, Martin O'Neill this week. <laughs> When we came back from Euro 2016, there was a lot of hope that this was the start of something rather than the end of something, that the likes of Jeff Hendrick and Robbie Brady had shown enough that we could be confident of a, of a promising new era for Irish football under Martin O'Neill. And it's just stagnated massively since then. Have you any sense of, of why that happened? Why this group weren't able to kick on after Euro 2016? Um, well, it, 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 in 2016, Nathan, there was a lot of things happened that weren't necessarily great. I mean, if you talk about, like, uh, um, pick, picking the team, consistency, mm. consistency about picking the team. In the Euros, although we did okay, there was no consistency of picking the team in that, in that particular series. And we did get a break, and nobody's supposed to ever talk about it, when we played Italy in that particular match where they were already through, and it didn't matter. The results didn't matter much to them. And there were a good few changes in that match. Like, Wes Hoolan played in that match. Reid played in... Uh, no, not Reid. Um, uh, Whelan. Sorry. In, in which game now, John? In, 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 uh, sorry, in the, in the match against Italy. Uh, there, was, there was a few players played in it, particularly Wes Hoolan, who was very, very good in that particular mm. match, who didn't play regularly at, at all, even after the, the, the Euros. So that was... Uh, but the team did do well, there's no doubt about it, in that particular match. But then you've got to march on, uh, march on from there. But we didn't, as you say. It, it got worse over the, the, the last couple of years till it got to the particular stage that we were in uh, in recent months. Now, we did lose some players, I'd have to say. You know, some experienced players went out, like the likes of John O'Shea, did go out of the team. Uh, but we never looked like we were getting any better. You know, there was lots of changes. Um, when I mean, you hear players, the Doherty was in the paper today yeah. saying, well, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. A lot of the players didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. Now, whether that was always the case leading up to the Euros and two years ago, we don't know. But I always thought, Martin, we never had a consistency of selection, uh, Nathan. I, I, think, I, I think with the players going out, like John O'Shea and the experienced players, and the lack of consistency in selection actually told on us in the end. The comments from Matt Doherty were particularly damning about the lack of coaching, 
the lack of preparation, comparing it to what they had become used to at, at club yeah. level. And we spoke to Conor Howran today, who basically backed that up as well, that the standard of coaching at club level was higher than what they were experiencing at international level. That, that's damning for Martin O'Neill's legacy. Yeah, but don't forget, that's, that's the way Martin always was. That hasn't happened in the last 12 months, uh, Nathan. Mm. That's what he managed from the start. Uh, now, how he, how he did it, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the, obviously, the personality the manager comes into it and that. But if, if you ask the players, they were doing that. And I go back to the, la- the lack of consistency in selection of the teams in the Euros. You know, for the team that played in the first match in the Euros, like by the time we played France, I mean, there were about six changes yeah. in it at that particular time. So you're not going to have a consistency. And, and, and in many ways, maybe that lack of if consistency selection caught up with Martin at some stage, especially when he lost the experienced players, Nathan. Because with experienced players, you know, they don't need an awful lot of coaching. They go out and do it and do most of it on their own. Now, ideally, they, they need uh, direction and coaching and all the various things that goes with preparation. Uh, but at least there, were, there was more experienced players in the side that could do it on their own, in my opinion. But it, it, I think it, overall it caught up on Martin in, 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 in what he was doing. Yeah, Conor Howard mentioned that as well today, that they really did feel, it seems, the loss of the more senior players who, yeah. as you say, maybe didn't need quite as much instruction. You would imagine, though, a coach of O'Neill's experience should be able to respond to that or certainly have a team around them that can respond to that. Well, you would imagine so. But what, but what we imagine and what actually happens is two different mm. things altogether. You know, I don't, I, maybe Martin, I don't know Martin all that well as a coaching capacity, but he might have done that with all of his teams. Yeah, well, everything we hear from his former Leicester and Celtic players suggests he did, and they rave about it. Yeah, that's, well, they obviously had good enough players to be able to do it on yeah. their own. Uh, and, 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 he, and he had a good run. You know, there's no doubt he did very well at Leicester. Leicester he did very well. So I thought he did very well at Villa. And certainly when he was appointed, I was very much in favour uh, of Martin O'Neill with the, with the, with the Irish team. Now, there was a lad with him, a great player, John Robertson, was with, was a coach with uh, Martin over that particular time. I don't think he was after Villa. I think he, he, he got ill. I did. Maybe he wasn't at Villa. But he might have been somebody that was doing the coaching. We don't know. You know, we don't know. But, uh, you know, somebody was doing something right at the clubs that he had the, the, the success at. Mm. Or maybe he had a collection of players, got a collection of players in who didn't need enough sort of coaching. Yeah. Now I'm only I'm only giving you uh, 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 things that might have happened. I don't know because you have to be there to know. But what we do hear from the Irish players that there wasn't a response. I mean, Roy Keane was was uh, was in the team as well. Like, what, what was Roy doing? Was he coaching them? There's there's, there's been no mention of Roy at all uh, in recent times. You know, so when things have gone gone very very badly, I mean, they've said about Martin that Martin did this and Martin did that. But I haven't heard anybody saying what Roy did or what he didn't do. Mm. Are we putting too much stock in what Roy should be doing, considering he was just the assistant manager? I know. Well, he was, he's assistant manager. The assistant managers can do a lot, uh, Nathan. You know, the manager does most of the stuff. But, but you usually have an assistant manager who can uh, talk to the, to, to the manager and give his views, uh, give his, his, what he thinks should, should be happening, and have an influence in it. Now, he won't be picking the team or anything like that. And he would do, they would do that privately, not in front of the players. But that's what assistant managers do. They're assistant. They're supposed to assist the manager in all mm. different ways. You know, whether it would be a player left out of the team and they put their arm around them and tell them to keep going. Or on, on, on the manager's uh, side, when they're talking together about the team, they say, look, Martin, do you not think we should be doing this or we should be doing that? And do you agree on it or disagree on it? But I haven't heard any, any, uh, anything from any of the players about Roy Keane's contribution to what they were doing at any time, Nathan. Except some of the, the controversial things, that's yeah. all. It, it seems quite strange the way it's unravelled over the last year, even accounting for the defeat to Denmark and, and the effect that would have on players and missing out on the World Cup. Martin O'Neill had a chance to leave in January. He could have gone and taken the Stoke job, and he said he wanted to stay because he was excited about working with the players who were coming through, and he felt mm. he still had a job to see through to the end. Yet that never really came across over... The last well, six or well, seven months. I don't have to interrupt you then. The, the first thing that came across from the particular meeting with, with uh, Stoke is that they didn't come to terms with it with him, or he didn't come to terms with Stoke. Mm. It was only later on that I heard that Martin wanted to stay with those players. Why did they go to see Stoke in the first place, uh, Nathan? Do you not go and just listen to what they have to say? For what? You know, for what? 
if you're 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 you're, you're, you're tied to these to, to, to the Irish situation. Now he might not have. It might have been out of contract at that particular. I don't mm. know. I, I forget what the circumstances was. But it hadn't been signed. Was the problem? Well, I know. But okay, if you agree terms and it hasn't been signed, you don't go speaking to another club about mm. what what you could possibly do. You Did just don't do that. If you if, if, if you've agreed the terms and you haven't signed the contract, I mean that's a le- legality. Now we're talking about people who are managing the Irish football team that you, you agree a contract, you haven't signed it, but in the meantime you go you go and talk to a, a, a club. You don't do things like that. Yeah. Once you agree the contract, even though you haven't signed it, you have agreed it. Would you agree with that? I, I would, but I guess if it's not there in writing... Ah, uh, uh, Nathan, no, that doesn't happen. You have a, you have a, a, a relationship with, with, uh, with the Irish job over two years or three years at that particular mm. time, maybe four years. You, don't, you can't just say, well, I, I, I've signed that, I've agreed it, but in the meantime, I'm going to talk to Stoke. And the first thing that came out from the, 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 the talks with Stoke was that the terms weren't agreed or the length of contract wasn't agreed. It was only later on that I heard from Martin that he, he didn't want to go to Stoke or he wanted to stay with the Irish team. Yeah. But if you, if you feel that strongly about the Irish team, you don't go and talk to anybody. He spoke to Everton as well, don't forget. It feels in a way like it's a bit of a wasted year in terms of results-wise, and we could have had a change of manager a year ago, possibly we could have had it in January if he had gone. Like, looking, it's, it's easy to talk about it in hindsight, but should the FAI have cut their losses after the defeat to Denmark? It was such a humiliating defeat in so many ways that at that stage, when it goes that badly wrong on that big a night, that maybe... You should always just make a change of manager at that stage. Uh, well, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been in favour of changing at that particular stage, uh, Nathan. I mean, that was a playoff to get to the World Cup, and it went very, very badly wrong. Uh, but uh, you know, that was that was a, a, a one-off match. I mean, we never played as badly or had such a bad result before. I, 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 w- I don't think I was in favour of Martin going at that particular time. But certainly, once, once looking in hindsight, that would have been the right thing to do because we know the results that followed after that. Mm. But at that particular stage, we didn't know that. We want to talk to you about what comes next, who should be the manager, but we're going to take a quick break first. Football on Off The Ball. In association with the faster than ever Boyle Sports app. Multiples made easy and personalised content on every sport. Download it now. Boyle Sports. Time to play. When you drive in daylight with your dipped headlights off, it's hard to be noticed. However, when you drive in daylight with your dipped headlights on, it's easy to be noticed. So easy, in fact, it will greatly reduce your chances of being involved in a collision. Lights on in the daytime. It's the bright way to save lives. From the Road Safety Authority. Logically, you know Cube Kitchens are expertly designed and fitted. Practically, you know they've got all the clever storage ideas you could wish for. Reassuringly, you know Cube have over 50 years' experience. But that's not why you want one. Cube Kitchens just look so overwhelmingly, irresistibly amazing. See our full kitchen wardrobe and furniture range, including Caligaris in Dublin and Cork or online at cubekitchens.ie or call to arrange a free consultation. Be kitchen proud with Cube. CompuBee's Black Friday event has kicked off and everything's reduced. That's absolutely everything. Up to 50% off Apple audio and accessories. Click CompuBee.com or visit in-store in Dublin, Cork, Limerick and Galway. Black Friday event ends November 30th. CompuBee. Real discounts, real service, real Apple experts. Ah, December, the most wonderful time of the year. But it can also be the most hectic time of the year. The weather gets worse, the queues get longer, and the demand for taxis gets higher. Taxi! At My Taxi Business, we know the meetings don't stop when the festive season starts. With four-minute wait times, a network of over 10,000 drivers and automated reporting, My Taxi wants to make your work life easier, no matter what the season. Visit business.mytaxi.ie. Business travel made simple. Just when you thought Kildare Village couldn't get any better. Just when you thought that saving up to 60% on all your favourite brands was as good as it gets. When you thought Kildare Village was shopping perfection. Then along comes a magical savings weekend with up to 70% off. 70%? It's like Black Friday, but for four days. Only at Kildare Village, November 23rd to the 26th. Kildare Village. 
where there's something extraordinary every day. Love your home. Don't miss our fantastic Black Friday offers with 20% of old stock items in store and online at Home Focus at Hickey's. Offer ends November 25th. Every brand has a story. Some are built over decades, others over centuries. Discover the German car brand meticulously engineered over 120 years to bring you our cleanest, most efficient engines yet. Discover Opel. Come and celebrate Opel's 120-year anniversary event at your local Opel dealership. Choose your perfect 191 Opel, then choose your preferred offer, like 0% PCP or HP Finance, a guaranteed minimum of €3,000 scrappage, or three years free servicing. Opel's 120-year anniversary event. From now until November 30th, visit your Opel dealership for more. Opel. The future is everyone's. Terms and conditions apply. It's the security of knowing that my business is protected by 24-hour high-tech surveillance. Top security. The sign of security. Football on Off The Ball. In association with the faster-than-ever Boyle Sports app for exclusive price enhancements on the biggest games around. Download it now. Boyle Sports. Time to play. You're welcome back. John Giles is still on the line. 53106 is the text number. John, before we get into the runners and riders and the possible contenders for this job, when you look at the players that are available to the new manager, what should our expectations be? Is there a group there that should be good enough to get us to Euro 2020? Um, well, it depends what group we're in, uh, Nathan. Uh, I, it's very difficult to know. I think there's a lot of young players coming in. I, I, well, let's put it this way. I think they can do a lot better than they have done in the last five to six matches. Mm. Uh, you can only get the... All I managed to do is get the best out of the players that he has at his disposal. I don't think that has happened. I think if a new manager comes in, then he's got to get the best out of... Uh, he has at his disposal. But when we play the teams, Dave, and I'm in Northern Ireland and, and even Denmark, I don't think there's any great teams out there. They're good teams. They've been better than us, but they've been better organised, particularly for the last 12 months. So you'd have to see a manager who gets the, what, what he's got at his disposal, get them well organised, and, and see what we can do from there. I mean, we played Northern Ireland last week, for example, and we were well beaten. We should have been we were probably 3-0. They should have won on day. Mm. I think on paper, they don't have any better players than we do. But they were better organised yeah. for us on the day, and well deserved to beat us. So any manager coming in, all you expect from him, can he get the best, or should he get the best uh, out of the players he's got at his disposal? And I don't think that has happened... Uh, with us over the last 12 months particularly. There's been plenty of names bandied about from Jurgen Klinsmann to Carlos Quiros, Steve Bruce, Paul Cook, but the two strong favourites, it seems, are Stephen Kenny and in particular Mick McCarthy, who it's even been reported today could be installed before the end of the weekend. Who do you think should be the next Ireland manager? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd probably go for Mick. And again, I've often said, Nathan, I would ha- the last thing I'd want in my life is to put my life on the, on, on the line to pick a successful manager. Mm. It's very, very difficult. But I'll, 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 I'll tell you now, if I was doing it now, I, w- I, would, I think I would pick Mick McCarthy. Why? Well, I think he's at an age now where he's uh, it's good for international team management. He's got a lot of experience. He's done the job before. And in most of the clubs he's been to, he's done a good job. He did a good job at Wolves. They didn't spend any money. They got they got sacked the next year. Mm. The job he's done at Ipswich has been a tremendous job. Uh, he had nothing to spend. He kept the mid table, and like all teams who were in mid table for a few seasons, particularly for the chairman or the owner, uh, I'm fed up in uh, middle of the table. He'll have to go. And where are Ipswich now, Nathan? Yeah, struggling. Bottom of the league. Yeah. Because in, in other words, doing the job that he did was a really good job to keep them in the position that they were in. Didn't have any resources, but it's only when he's gone. Uh, that you realise what a good job he's done. So I think Mick over the years has done a good job, uh, uh, generally done a good job. And I think he's at an age now where he's got plenty of experience. I think he's, he's, he's well aware of the, the problems that he'd have with the Irish team. I think he'd be well aware of the players that he has at his disposal. So for what it's worth, that would be my pick. You think that enough water is under the bridge in the, what are we at, 15, 16 years since he left the job, that there'd be no ill feeling from say, Saipan, or even the way it just fell apart after the World Cup in 2002. At that time, people were happy to be rid of Mick McCarthy as our uh, manager. Well, the, but the country was split at that time, uh, Nathan. You know, the 50% wanted him and 50% didn't. It was a very, very difficult time for him. But if you go back to the actual World Cup itself, I know we, it's, it's the keen uh, uh, situation and McCarthy situation that we all talk about at that particular <laughs> time. 
but they did actually do very well in the finals. Sure. If you go back to the final when we played Spain, we missed a penalty in normal time and lost on a penalty shootout. So the actual performances were good. Now, there was the aftermath of the, 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 the bitterness between uh, McCarthy and, and Keane that split the country. And I think after that, he was, he was on a loser anyway. Yeah. Uh, but times, you know, that's a long time ago. And I think people have, have come to their senses about the, the, who, was, who was in favour of who at that particular time. And I think Mar- Mick McCarthy, my opinion is that he would be well received. One of the reasons that's been given for McCarthy, say above Stephen Kenny, is that because Mark McCarthy has gone to England and has proven that he can manage a championship level and has managed in the Premier League and has all that experience, that he would instantly earn the trust and respect of the players in the dressing room, where Stephen Kenny may still be something of an unknown quantity to quite a lot of them, despite his undoubted success at Dundalk in the League of Ireland, that because he hasn't done it outside of this country, they may not respect him as much. Do you think that could be a potential issue? I think it is an issue. I don't agree with it, but mm. I think it is an issue uh, because it's all about uh, opinions and, and, and uh, what you think, who will do a good job and their experience and all that. And it's very, very difficult to know. I think Stephen Kenny has done a terrific job. Uh, I mean, if, if I was in an Irish position, uh, I would try to find a role for, for, for Stephen Kenny uh, going into the future. Uh, but I do understand that you know, he, hasn't, he hasn't done it at a certain level, and there would be reservations about that. I, I wouldn't necessarily, because I think if you're doing a good job, football in Ireland is football in Ireland, it's football yeah. around the world. But I do understand uh, uh, people's uh, reservations about doing it at League of Ireland rather than uh, premiership level or, or higher levels. Whenever the manager's job comes up, and well, it's probably more even a constant conversation about Irish football, about the role of the manager, whether their job should solely be getting results on the pitch with the senior team, or whether they should have a greater role in Irish football and a a good connection with the under-21 side, a real strong interest in what's happening at underage level, at grassroots level. Where do you stand on that? Whoever gets this job, is it just about what the senior team delivers, or should they have a greater mandate? Well, I I think that the priority is how the senior team delivers. Uh, Nathan, I'd have no no doubt about that, but I can't see any reason why the, the manager couldn't have some influence on the 21s, 19s, or work with whoever's doing the 21s and 19s. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I'll go back to my time, and, and I, I tried to do, when I was manager of the Irish team, I was player manager of the Irish team, I actually took the, the, the done the 21s and the other 16s, and I believed that, you know, if, I, if they're coming through the first team, then I'd like them to be playing the way that I want the first team to play. Now, to be quite honest, I didn't have the time or the resources to do it. But I do believe that the, 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 the manager of the, the first team should have an influence in the under-21s, the 1917s, whether it's he himself doing as much as he can or giving it to somebody... Uh, are given are us giving it to somebody that is very very influenced and could be very influential in the future. I think it should all go together. Now. Yeah. Aside from those obvious two contenders, then is there anyone else who you've heard connected with the job or that you feel should be in the running? Well, well, Chris Hutton. I, I don't think he's, he's uh, given any any um, hints at all. No, he, he seems quite happy job. at Brighton. All right, he seems to be well set in at Brighton. But I think he'd be an outstanding. Con- uh, 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 a uh, pl- pe- person for that particular role, yeah. And we we saw today Allardyce was mentioned. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that at any price. Uh, to be honest, uh, Steve Bruce, Steve Bruce is doing a good job uh, at different clubs that he's been in. Uh, but I, I, I would certainly go for uh, uh, Chris uh, McCarthy and um, uh, Stephen Kenny before before any of the others mentioned. Okay. A uh, lot of text coming in, obviously, such huge interest. It is incredible, the level of interest, despite people thinking maybe it's falling off at times with the national team. Does John think that the book solely stops with Martin O'Neill or Mick McCarthy if he's to be the new man in charge? How have the FAI furthered the cause of football in Ireland over the past decade, as a text in from Terry? Well, well, that's, we're on to a different subject there, uh, Nathan, to be quiet. I'm not trying to get off the question. Mm. But the, 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 the first team with Martin O'Neill, Martin O'Neill and, and Roy Keane stands on its own for what they do uh, in their particular position. I mean, how the players are coming through or if there's a lack of players and why not is another discussion. But, but certainly the, the players that Martin O'Neill had his, at his disposal ultimately uh, didn't make the most of them. Ultimately. Right. 
So but, you think uh, that the play, you, know, you think that, the players that, are there. Sorry, sorry, Nathan. Sorry, you think you, you you think that the players are there to be good enough to actually qualify for European Championship? Well, they did qualify with Martin O'Neill mm. for the European Championship and did quite well in it. Now, some of the experienced players did go out of it. They did 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 go off the scene. Okay, but you know, the, if you go back in the, the last campaign leading up to the Denmark match, we were four points or five points ahead of everybody else at the halfway stage, Nathan. Yeah. So. You know, th- th- that didn't continue, but that was, th- that was down to the managerial team that we had at this particular time. You know, how, what the players are through or why they're not coming through or why they're coming through is a different day's work. So you can't go back over 10 years to what happened uh, in the last 12 months with the, with the Martin O'Neill team, where we totally collapsed. We're better than that, uh, regardless of what happened in, in the last 10 years or not. Uh, great to hear John Giles, the ultimate maestro on and off the field. Irish international football turned on a November day in 1974. Ireland, led by John, brought us to a famous seismic win over the USSR. A text in from Dennis, a night I'm sure you remember well, John. I was, yeah, it was an afternoon, actually, uh, Nathan. I think it was a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Liam Brady's first match. Uh, it was um, my first competitive match with, with, with the Irish team. And the USR were a big, big, well, a big team, as we would know. Uh, and we played exceptionally well. Brady was grand. Don Given scored a hat trick. And it, it was a great day. It was a good day. The uh, honeymoon period. Yeah, definitely. We'll uh, talk about that night and that day again, I think, sometime. And finally, had the pleasure of meeting John at a dinner in Cork last Friday. The adults in the room were like kids meeting Messi for the first time. Complete gent and a great singer, more importantly. <laughs> I, I don't mind the play a bit, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> they left it at that, John. All yeah, they said was complete gent yeah, and a great singer. I, go, I, keep, I keep going while I'm ahead, Nathan. Exactly. John, yeah. great stuff as always. we we'll talk to you next Thursday. Thanks, Nathan. Bye. All right, quick break, and then we're going to talk to Mark O'Shea about his career, and we'll talk golf as well in the next hour. Join that conversation on Facebook and Twitter. At the Plaza Group, winning national awards are always nice, like the best motorway service station and best forecourt facilities at the Galway.